Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome into AZ AF Arena for today's matchup between the big three divisional rivals. It's the Durfee Hilltoppers, the Brockton Boxers, and for once, it might actually be warmer in this arena than it is outside. It felt like, and I quote, negative 12 degrees when we came in this afternoon. This game taking place on Saturday, January 6th. Stay warm tomorrow, folks. Make some chili, watch some uh, wild card weekend action. Negative 35 degree wind chills expected. Well, the Durfee Hilltoppers and the Brockton Boxers the last two standing in the big three after New Bedford folded their pro, uh, program after last year. Both of these teams have the same school colors. The Hilltoppers wearing their way, black jerseys, black shorts, red trim around the white numbers. The Boxers, of course, in their home whites, black shorts with red trim around the black numbers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action high above the ice. here at AZF. Brian Moran and Larry Curran, the officials for this matchup. Boxers coming off a gutsy one-to-one -one draw against the Milton Wildcats. Let's take a minute to talk about that one. Brockton trailing for pretty much the first 55 minutes. Tying it up late in the third and able to hold off the Wildcats as Durfee ices the puck. That was one of those gut check wins it was projected Milton would come out on top by a large margin. Brockton holding tough behind the goaltending of Nathan Petty. Petty has now played four and a third games. Allowing 12 goals against. That's good for a 277 goals against average and an 871 save percentage. Brockton's leading scorer, Frank Ayton, four goals. There is a three way tie for second. Place on that list, Zach Sylvia, Justin Crookshank, and Peyton Sylvia, each with three goals. As this one goes for an icing against the Hilltoppers. 14.04 left in the first. Couple of icings against Durfee. Brockton's had an interesting start to the year. A 5-4 loss against Falmouth in the season opener. Then it was off to the Walpole Tournament after an 8-0 win against the North Quincy Red Raiders. And they lost to last year's Super 8 contender, the Walpole Rebels, in the first game of that tournament. A blowout in that one, I believe it was 8-0 final score. In the consolation game in that tourney, it was a 5-2 win over Acton Boxborough. And then we saw the two, uh, the 1-1 one -one draw against the Milton Wildcats. As this one into the Brockton zone taking possession is Peter Sylvia. Brockton with a couple of shots already. They change out. There is only four boxes on the ice now. A fifth joins in. It is number 15, Dante Massaro, the freshman. His twin brother, Dominic, is expected to see some action here today.
The Twins, the last of the Massaro clan is Durfee with a shot, pad save, Petty rebound to the half boards on the far side. So Massaro's Franco, the oldest child, boxer goalkeeper for four years on varsity. As Brockton with an opportunity, excellent diving block slash poke check, and it's a three on two up ice for the Hilltoppers and off sides. Petty made the stick save anyway. So after Franco, it was Marissa who graduated last year off to play at Franklin Pierce University. And the twins, Dominic and Dante, are both freshmen. Starting goalkeeper for the Hilltoppers, Anthony Quigley, the junior, making a save. Quigley, one of three goaltenders listed on this Hilltoppers roster. The only one dressed today. And a center ice faceoff. Brockton scored. Zach Sylvia with his fourth on the air, tying the team lead. Assisted by Justin Crookshank. We're very confused by the lack of celebration. I understand that in a blowout, but it's the first goal of the game. Come on, guys. One nothing boxers, five minutes into the first period. Brockton pressuring already. This one dumped in as Durfee changes out. Just pass off the mark as Seamus Sheehan dumps it into the Hilltopper zone. Expected to see all four boxer lines in equal action today, as well as all three defensive pairs. One would also expect, should the boxers put a couple of more goals in net. Now at the end of the first period, we'll see a goaltender switch the same at the end of the second. Just so the freshman can get a little game action. Ryan Spano and Dominic Massaro, the two freshman goalkeepers listed on the Brockton roster. Massaro yet to play in a game this year. This is typically is digging for the puck, it squirts loose. Brockton retaining possession. This is usually one of those pad the stats games. A couple of years ago, it was 19 to one at home, 14 to one on the road. Last year, it was 15 to two on the road and nine to one at home. And the boxers getting the better in each of those matchups. Extended break for the boxers after that game against Milton. That game was last Saturday, so the boxers have had a week off. And that included a 16 inch snow dump on the city of Brockton and two days off from school.
This one deflected the end boards. Sent out in front, now loose, Brockton shot, and it ping-ponged around, and now Durfee able to get it out into the neutral zone. People still trying to clear out from that snowstorm and dig out. Sixteen inches, that's a foot and four inches of snow. Minus the plow, what they added to it. That's a lot of snow. Some of us that are not that tall have specific issues digging up from the snow, especially BCA alumnus, the angry elf Jessica Bishop, who is in attendance for this game today. We heard that her family lost her in the driveway she was buried under snow. Her family lost her. They had to send out the search and rescue team. Seven oh five to go in the first period. It is one nothing boxers. Durfee winning the face off. Brockton taking possession. Old school hip check is a few swicks, sticks swinging around. And now Durfee with an opportunity. Are they gonna be able to get a shot off? Yes and no, number 19, Zach Massa, the freshman. If frustrations get the better of the Hilltoppers as they have in years past, this one will turn ugly at some point. Of course, last year was the infamous rant about the music in the volume in AZF Arena. Coach after the game having a few words with the Brockton coach and athletic director. He says, we can't focus on the bench and we can't communicate when the music is so loud. Then he was talking about contesting the, the score because of that with the MIAA, this, that, and the other thing. I mean, in a nine to one Lost. I don't know how much music has to do with it. Five and a half to go in the first period. It is one nothing. The boxers over their divisional rivals, the Durfee Hilltoppers. Petty stick save, grabbing the rebound, diving on it for the faceoff. So one must wonder. Do we start calling the division the big two? New Bedford folding their program after last year, thankfully, after having only nine skaters last season. There were five boys and four girls on that roster and they could not compete with anybody going with the Cleveland Browns record, the perfect season. Speaking of Cleveland Browns, shout out to the Dog Pound, the fan base. 0-16 record, as Durfee with an opportunity here, a backhanded shot into the awaiting glove of Petty. 0-16 perfect season, tens of thousands of fans came to their stadium yesterday to have a parade around the stadium in the form, the parade route was a circle for zero, as in zero wins as Petty makes another pad save. This one sent out to the blue line and another shot deflected wide. A 
another shot sent wide. Now a shot, Pat save, loose in the crease, Brockton clears it out. There was a hilltopper in the back of the net. This number 10 is on the ice. There is Madison Collins, the sophomore defense woman, the only girl listed on the roster of the Durfee Hilltoppers. Durfee with some extended zone time late in the first period. This one sent all the way through as Collins keeps it in. Three fifteen to go. Brockton taking possession high off glass out into the neutral zone. Frank Aiton now three on two up ice for the boxers. Peyton Sylvia, Jalen Bridges, and Atten. This is now Peyton Sylvia. Aiden with a shot and a goal. Aiden ripping one from the faceoff dot. Top corner. And it is two to nothing boxers with 2.49 left in the first period. Brockton winning the faceoff. So Jalen Bridges and Peyton Sylvia on the assists as Frank Atten saying to Zach Sylvia, sharing is caring. You had a, a share of the scoring lead for a little bit, but it's mine. I will take it back. So now Sylvia is going to answer if he wants to share that scoring lead. Of course, Sylvia flipping from, originally he was a defenseman, like freshman year. Switching to forward last year. Having a phenomenal season up front as one of the boxers' top three scorers, along with Corey Paul. And Anthony Paul, excuse me. Now Durfee with an opportunity. This one sent in and a six save by Petty with a minute and a half to go. Well, this year Brockton is short on the defensive end, so Zach Sylvia has flipped back to the back end. Sylvia with the puck now. Minute to go in the first period. Brockton dumping it in. One sent across the crease, nobody on the receiving end for Brockton. Shot ripped off of the glove of Quigley into the protective netting. Brockton sending out its high octane line of Aiden, Sylvia, and Bridges for this neutral zone face off, 26.4 to go. Another one for the boxers. Getting a insurance goal before the period break. 
16.2 to go. The only question is who's this going to be credited to? Now, five seconds to go. Brockton's just going to hold it in their own zone. And now sent out into the neutral zone. The buzzer sounds. The first period has come to an end. A 3 to nothing lead for the Brockton Boxers going into the first break. Frank Ayton, Zach Sylvia, and I believe Jalen Bridges on the goals for the Boxers will get the official word on that last goal. But it's 3 nothing. Brockton over Durfee going into the first break. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second period action right after this. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Hey Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome, okay, I'm on my way. Hey guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! We're going biking, yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi babe, how was school today? Hi Dad, it was great. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into the Ice House for second period action between the Durfee Hilltoppers and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high above the ice here at Brockton High School. The score coming into the second period, 3-0 is Brockton. Almost getting a quick one. Where did that one end up? It did. It went right between the legs of the new goalkeeper of the Durfee Hilltoppers is Xavier Arpa. Hit the back post and right back between his legs. So Brockton up 4 nothing. Might have been eaten again. Jalen Bridges assisting on Aiton's goal. Aiton's second of the afternoon and overall his sixth. So for the rest of the game, it's Frank Aiton looking for the hat trick. I'll be honest, if he gets the hat trick, I'm not taking my hat off. Four to nothing, the boxers over the hilltoppers. <laughs> as bad as it is to say, well, here comes Ben Martin, and Martin scores. Ripping one from the faceoff dot. And Ben Martin has put the boxers up five to nothing. We are a minute and two seconds into the second period. This one's been. Blown off the rails. Uh, for the record, I said the score at the end of the second was going to be seven to nothing boxers. Mike took eight nothing as Durfee calls their timeout. And Jessica Bishop, the angry elf BCA alumnus, said the boxers are only going to score three goals in the second period. So if she is correct, they've only got one more tally coming in the next. 13.58. It is five to nothing courtesy of Ben Martin. We might have to manually track goals as the scoreboard has not updated with that fifth goal. 
That'll be Martin's second goal of the year, his fourth point. So again, whenever you guys see this, stay warm. I hear there's another snowstorm on the way. Middle of next week. Not going to be huge, but snow is snow. Martin goes down. I don't think we're going to see any penalties called for the duration unless it's something incredibly egregious. Backhanded shot. Stick save by Petty. Peter Sylvia up to Nathan L. Shami. Shami spinning around with it now back to Peter Sylvia. Sylvia back in around for El Shami. Number 20 for Durfee, Jacob Martins with it. Durfee finally able to clear out three on two up ice, but losing it. And Ben Martin grabbing possession as Durfee changes out its back pair. And now two on one for the Hilltoppers. It's number eight, Cole Carmody. His shot saved by Petty. Rebound cleared out by the boxers. Excellent first minute of the period for the boxers. Two goals in 102 for Durfee called their timeout. Now Massaro takes a huge hit. As you can tell, Durfee's getting a little bit more frustrated. That's a hold. So we're officially not going to see any penalties called today. If that's your threshold. A shot. This one's saved by Arpa. As number two, Nick Landry was taken down. And again... Now a little bit of a slashing battle behind the net between Brendan Palermo and number 11 of the Hilltoppers, Owen Norton. Durfee with a shot. A pad save to the end boards for Nathan Petty. This is Madison Collins now. So he sends it in deep. Eleven minutes left in the second period. It is five nothing, Brockton over the Durfee Hilltoppers. As bad as it is to say, the winner of this game is Division Champs and will clinch a berth in the MIAA tournament. And we're only six games into the season, folks. There's a little forearm shiver as number 11, Jake Jaguer, went down. Now Palermo putting the body on Matt Saunders. Backhanded shot trickles wide and number 15, Andrew Saunders, comes up with it. Sylvia with a fireball through the slot off a couple of sticks and wide. Zach Sylvia has it. Sylvia needs one goal more than Frank Aiden on the day to have a share of the boxer scoring lead. 
Aiden's got six now on the year and Sylvia has four. one sent in deep by the Hilltoppers is a shoving match and someone's stick went flying as begging for a call is Palermo. He now skates to the bench. His twig is sitting at center ice. The puck hits the Deadwood. Nine minutes to go. And an icing against the boxers. You'd think someone would pick up the twig. Aiden is the one to do that. He hands it to Palermo on the bench. Broughton winning the face off. They have on pretty much everything today. This one deflected in and no icing. Jalen Bridges able to tap the puck to Peyton Sylvia. Sylvia with some nifty stick work to create some space and he <laughs> gets tangled with the ref. Bridges tapping it to himself. The assistant captain of the boxer spinning it into the crease. Peyton Sylvia comes up with it and Peyton Sylvia with some nifty stick work in the last minute. This one ping ponging around. Durfee clears out. Jalen Bridges to chase it down for Brockton. Bridges goes down. Able to move it to Aiton. We are finally Going to see a penalty, number 11, going for a trip that is Owen Norton. Brockton on their first power play opportunity of the game. Two minutes on the clock, it is Owen Norton for tripping. Zach Sylvia. This one deflected, Peter Sylvia. Now Zach Sylvia to Peter. Peter circling into the slot, grabbing his own rebound. Now Zach Sylvia able to keep it in nicely before Durfee clears it out. Cam Bronco clearing it out for the Hilltoppers. Zach Sylvia, back to Nathan El Shami, looking back to Sylvia, too much muster on to the end boards. Durfee rings it around and out into the neutral zone. A minute left on the penalty to Norton. Brockton will have to re-enter. Sylvia dumping it back for Ben Martin. Martin already with a goal, the boxer's fifth of the afternoon. Backhanding it for Peter Sylvia and Durfee able to clear it all the way down the river with 35 seconds to go on the power play. This one all the way up will go for an icing against the boxers with 26 seconds left. On the power play, 6.20 in the second period. Brockton winning the face off. They've got time for one more clean entry. Peyton Sylvia to do the honors. Sylvia's cross and unable to connect was Aiton and Durfee sends it all the way down with 10 seconds left. That should just about do it for 
the boxer power play. Aiden with one more opportunity. Back to even strength, but Brockton with some zone time, a spin around shot. And Aiden unable to get the trick. Is a stick save by Arpa. Brockton with extended zone time here. Peyton Sylvia now. A slap shot. This one deflected off the stick of Arpa and it popped up. And he didn't know where it went. Aiden to Bridges behind the net. Bridges taken down. He might be hurt. Jalen Bridges is indeed favoring his left leg as he goes to the boxer bench. Something to watch. Jalen Bridges in a heck of a lot of pain on the boxer bench as he was taken down in the slot by the Hilltoppers. Slashed by one and cross-checked by the other. No call. Five minutes even left in the second period. So the boxers minus their starting center, Jalen Bridges. El Shami with a shot, stick save, the rebound. Deflected to the end board, Sproughton with probably their best opportunity of the game that has not gone in. As the boxers tag up, four and a half to go in the second period. It is five to nothing, Brockton on top. El Shami with a creative self pass. Now Ben Martin. Backhanding it out. Bodies flying everywhere. Martin backhanding around for El Shami. This one getting through the protective netting into the crowd. 3.52 left, there is something going on on the far side with that puck. Brockton swinging across into the slot, and now Zach Sylvia couldn't get much on the slap shot. He might tee one up here, launches a wrister, blocked away by one of the Hilltoppers, and number 15 is dinged up. That is Andrew Saunders, the sophomore defenseman, favoring his right leg. This one popped into the stomach of Saunders, loose in the crease, and diving on it was Arpa as a shoving match ensues. Three oh two to go in the second period. It is five nothing boxers. Goal scores in no particular order. Aiton with two. Zach Sylvia with one. Bridges might have got. The one at the end of the first period with 16 seconds left, and Ben Martin. Some more dead wood on the ice as someone's stick has found the surface. It's an icing. It's just to give you guys an idea of how cold it is out there. It feels like it's negative 12 right now. Tomorrow's going to be a heck of a lot worse than that. It's going to feel like negative 35. 
if ice reaches a certain temperature, it begins to crack. Will that temperature is yet to be determined here. Every ice surface is different. But it would not surprise me if the next time we come to AZ Alfarina there is a big old crack in the middle of the ice. Two minutes to go in the first period. One twenty left in the period. This one getting progressively chippier. One minute to go in the first period. Brockton up five nothing over Curfew Hilltoppers, another twig has found the ice. This one, Al Birmingham stick. Able to pick it up. 40 seconds to go now, Durfee with it. Now at looking for the trick, his shot off a couple of bodies. Jalen Bridges back on the ice, that's good to see. Sylvia deflected off of the stick of Camp Bronco and Durfee able to clear out with 20 seconds to go. Adam Bridges and Peyton Sylvia in three on two. Aiton launches a shot, deflected loose in the crease. Where is it? It's still loose. Peyton Sylvia with it now with five seconds to go. And Brockton's going to hold on. The buzzer sounds and the second period has come to an end. It is five to nothing. Boxers over the Hilltoppers pitching the shutout is Nathan Petty. Be interesting to see if he gets a rest for the third period, whether we will see the freshman Ryan Spano in net. It is five to nothing. Boxers over the Hilltoppers for the big threes automatic bid into the MIAA South Sectional Tournament. We're gonna step aside and take a short break and bring you third period action right after this. Man, you don't have to be so strong. Strength is not optional. This is my mother, my purpose. Real muscle is lifting her spirits between bedpans and bad news from doctors that doubt her strength. Strength is buried in bills, managing meds, and swallowing those moments of, Mom, it's me, your daughter. Remember, my strength is super, but I'm still human, right? <laughs> Find support for your strength. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No? No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. 
You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ Alpha Arena for third period action between the Durfee Hilltoppers and the Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high above the ice here at Brockton High School. This one is officially a blowout. It is five to nothing, the Boxers on top. And they have made a goaltender switch. Nathan Petty with two shutout periods. It is now Ryan Spano in his third period of action on the year. He comes in with six goals against an outstanding 9.0 goals against average and a 625 save percentage. 10 saves on 16 shots for the freshman goalkeeper for Brockton. There's been a update to the boxer scoring. Zach Sylvia got the first goal to claim a share of the boxer scoring lead, but since then, Number 17, Frank Aiton, has been on fire. Three straight goals. He's got a hat trick, including one with 16 seconds left in the first period. And to cap off the boxer scoring, it was Ben Martin. It's Martin in, his backhanded shot, pad saved by Arpa. Kirkshank launching one, blocked away and able to defend it rather easily was Al Birmingham. Coach Cunningham has officially told his kids, ease off the gas just a little bit. Only use your big toe on the gas pedal. Don't floor it like always. This game seemingly every year a go through the motions game. The Sprocket has come out on top in big way in the last few years as this one finds its way into the boxer bench. Twelve and a half to go in the third period. Five nothing, Brockton. As the Boxers, barring a few small miracles, will move above 500 to three, two, and one on the year. It's pad save Spano. Starfy with, I think it's best opportunity yet. Now Collins.
Brockton able to clear out 11.44 to go. Brockton's got a big one coming up next Wednesday against the Mansfield Hornets. Backhanded shot saved by Spano. So Mansfield Hornets and then it is Waltham. Next Saturday, that one is up at Waltham. The next home game for the Boxers, the King Philip Warriors on January 20th. Two o'clock puck drop on that one. We'll have it for you on Brockton Community Access. Next matchup of these two teams, February 7th at Durfee. Durfee coming into this game at one and five. Their lone win coming against O'Brien. The Hilltoppers move on to face the tag team, the old school co-op of Dighton, Rehoboth, and Seekong. And Demon after that. Shot well wide now, 9.15 to go in the third period. Stick save Spano, letting the rebound go to Birmingham. Jalen Bridges, tic-tac-toe, and Brockton is on the board. In the third period, Bridges tapping the final pass home, and Brockton's up six to nothing with 8.40 to go. Frank Aiden will be credited with the assist on that. Peyton Sylvia on the assist. Zach Sylvia in, he launches a soft shot. A save off the glove of Arpa. Out to the blue line for Sylvia. Brockton in full waste the clock mode. This one up into the protective netting. So neutral zone face off. Durfee's backhanded shot, stick save by Spano. Birmingham grabs the rebound that came almost all the way out to the blue line. Now Ben Martin with it.
Birmingham with a slap pass down low. Six and a half to go. Brockton up six to nothing over the Durfee Hilltoppers. Should rephrase, winner of this game not clinching the big three division, but at least a share of it. So either way, Brockton has already claimed a bid into the South sectional playoffs. And we are going to have another goalkeeper switch. It is Dominic Massaro. It's been a while since we've had a Massaro grace us in net here at AZ Afarina. The last one to do so was Franco, and he had a phenomenal career here at Brockton High School. Tested way too much, but still strong. This one goes all the way down for the icing waved off in the interest of let's not stop the clock. Dominic, the undersized freshman his shoulders sit just above the crossbar. I want to thank our cameraman for today's festivities as Dominic might have his first shot. He does. And it went wide. Now off the skate of Masaro and out. Masaro's first action, and now we want to thank our cameraman for today's festivities. The one, the only, Mike the Postman Simmons. Yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. Twice on Sundays, in the snow, in the rain. When everybody else is under a foot and a half of ice, the postman will deliver, and he always rings twice. Four and a half to go in the third period. This one ping-ponging around, almost finds the Durfee net. A slap shot one-timer for Nick Landry, and it went wide. Sylvia preventing a shot. Now backhanding it out into the neutral zone. 3.50 to go in the third period. 6 nothing boxers over the Hilltoppers. all the way down for an icing. Three fifteen to go. Brockton is up and up big looking for their first you know, second shot out of the year. Of course that 8-0 victory over the North Quincy Red Raiders. Run up to number eight of the boxers, Cade O'Connell. Backhanded shot off the skate of Arpa. Cleared but not out by Durfee. 
Kirkshank with some yeoman's work on the blue line to keep it in. Durfee launching a shot, pad saved by Massaro. The rebound to the high slot. Spin around shot off the skate of Birmingham. And now to the end boards. All the way down. No icing. 145 left. Hayden Sylvia launching a shot. And a good save by Arpa. Jalen Bridges on the ice. This one sent out. Now it's a foot race easily won by Zach Sylvia with about a minute to go. A shot blocker saved by Massaro. Rebound to the end boards. Forty-five seconds left. Brockton might try to get one more. Sylvia holding in the neutral zone back to Bridges. Bridges playing a little bit of defense. Now to the bench in favor of Dante Massaro. The Twins on the ice at the same time. First time on the season. Twenty seconds to go. Now about fifteen. Brockton with it behind the net. Kyle Crookshank hitting the ice now at seven seconds left. And Seamus Sheehan into the bench. A stoppage with 1.4 seconds left. The pointless faceoff in the boxers' defensive zone. So scoring for the boxers, Zach Sylvia with the first goal, and then three straight, Frank Ayton with the hat trick, Ben Martin, and then Jalen Bridges for the six boxer goals. Durfee held scoreless the boxers' second shutout of the year, the 8 0 victory over North Quincy, and 6 0 over the Durfee Hilltoppers. Victorious coach Chris Cunningham, 6 0 win against the divisional rival. This win clinches you at least a share of the uh, Big Three Divisional Crown and a automatic berth into the MIAA playoffs so early in the season. What's that like? Uh, well, we have a couple goals for the season, and uh, we, we wanted uh, 10 wins, so that's that's kind of our goal. So we're kind of just looking at this is a third win, so we're now 3-2, and two, and we're over 500 for the first time uh, in two years. So uh, that's a positive step, and uh, you know, just keep keep climbing. And we've got a tough week coming uh, ahead of us, so we'll just uh, stay focused on our goal. It's been an interesting week. We started off with the New Year's holiday, then we had a giant snowstorm. Talk about your week of preparation heading into this game. Uh, we just we had uh, practice every day except for Thursday, uh, so we were able to get in here and practice uh, yesterday. And uh, you know, we so we had the extra day anyways. We didn't have the game on Wednesday. So, uh, you know, we still got three, three days of practice in. So, um, you know, it was uh, pretty good. And, uh, you know, two more days of practice till we have uh, Mansfield on Wednesday. What's the feeling like you mentioned it above 500 first time in two years? That's a big step. Oh, definitely. You know, uh, confidence wise and just to see ourselves. I mean, we look on the uh, on the uh, Mass High School Hockey uh, website and just see ourselves uh, somewhere in the middle there. Uh, middle of the pack and, and not uh, struggling down by the bottom. Um, you know, it's a it's a confidence boost and uh, you know,
you know, we've worked really hard um, in the off season and, uh, you know, in the preseason. So, you know, I think we deserve a little bit of, uh, you know, recognition, I guess you could say, even if it's just amongst ourselves. So for about three and a half minutes, Zach Sylvia held a share of the boxer scoring lead before Atten put in three for a hat trick. Talk about the contributions of those two guys all season and today spe specifically. Yeah, I mean, Zach's been the key to our uh, offense. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he holds holds the fort down in the defensive zone and he really controls the play. So, uh, you know, the offense, the team really goes through through Zach. And uh, other seniors like Frankie and, and uh, Justin, uh, you know, contribute heavily as well. But, uh, you know, Frankie has uh, done a good job of, uh, you know, putting the puck in the net this year. Um, you know, the three seniors really have been the spark. Uh, when one hasn't uh, hasn't done it, the other one has stepped up. Um, you know, Justin stepped up uh, big against Acton Boxborough. So the three of them have really uh, found a way to really lead the team, and uh, they, they get it going for us. For the first time all year, we saw all three goalkeepers in a game talk about they're all young, first of all. Talk about what you're doing to prepare them for the future as well as get some really good experience this year. Uh, with the three young goalies, we actually uh, we changed up our practices a lot. We kind of designed them around them. So the first half hour of practice we is all designed in one end to kind of work on the goaltenders. And, uh, you know, the, the rest of the team is sort of doing other things down the other end. So... Uh, coach Stanley actually was was a was a goalie, so he's really the uh, goalie coach, and he's done a great job. Um, you know, I don't know if if everyone else has noticed, but we've noticed a huge difference uh, just with their confidence, just with different moves that they make. You know, that goaltenders make. Um, you know, we notice a lot of that, and they just have a lot more confidence. So uh, they get a lot more way to go. They're like you said, they're still young, but uh, we've seen a lot of improvement in our goaltending in the uh, first month of the season. Coach, congratulations on the big win and the milestone. All right, thanks a lot. The Boxers are headed to the postseason, clinching at least a share of the Big Three Divisional Championship against the Durfee Hilltoppers. Of course, New Bedford does not have a team this year. So the next matchup on February 7th between these two teams in Durfee it will be for the entirety of the Big Three Divisional Championship. Good win here for the Boxers. They move to 3-2-1 and one on the year. Durfee falls to 1-6. and six. 6 nothing. your final score for everyone here at Brockton Community Access. Our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.